Welcome to the Poe Museum. These shelves are full of Edgar Allan Poe biographies written over the past century and a half by a variety of different authors with different agendas. So if you're looking for a good Poe biography, where do you start? Wouldn't it be a lot more convenient if he had left us his autobiography? Well, he did. Sort of. And that'll be the subject of tonight's installment of the Curator's Crypt. Well, here it is. This little autobiographical memo, not a full-length biography, Poe wrote this 1841. He really wanted to get his poetry included in the new book, The Poets and Poetry of America. This big volume, edited by Rufus W. Griswold. This was going to make or break Poe's career. If you wanted to be a poet in America in the 1840s, you wanted to get your work in this book. So Poe wrote a letter to Griswold and included three of his poems, but also a little biographical sketch for inclusion in the book. And we can see just by looking at the back, there's the remnants of a postmark and of Rufus Griswold's address. But on the other side, the important side, check out this tiny, tiny, tiny handwriting. Poe has written his whole life story. So what can we learn about Poe from this? Well, first of all, he lies about his birthday to say he's two years younger than he really is. Then, instead of saying that he's from a family of Irish immigrants, that his mother's a traveling actress, he says his family is one of the oldest and most respectable in Baltimore. Then he says he graduated first in his class at UVA, took off to Europe to fight the Greek Wars of Independence, but got captured, sent to St. Petersburg, Russia, was rescued from there, all made up. Poe is trying to embellish his life story to make himself seem more interesting, more like the American equivalent of the British romantic poet Lord Byron, you know, the one they said that was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. That's who Poe wanted to be. So that's the persona that Poe is creating. Incidentally, that's what got almost verbatim into the Poets and Poetry of America. Then later, Griswold's published The Prose Writers of America, which contains some of Poe's short stories along with the autobiographical memo. And then after Poe died, Griswold compiled the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. This is volume three, and it includes Griswold's memoir of Edgar Allan Poe, which takes a lot of its cues from Poe's autobiographical sketch. The problem is, Poe is making up most of what he said, and Griswold was too. Griswold embellished this. Griswold said that Poe was arrested in St. Petersburg for public drunkenness and had to be rescued. And Then he also added stories about Poe making a pass at his foster father's second wife. He said that Poe was a horrible, miserable, despicable person. So you see, one false biography built upon the next. And sure, people came out afterwards to say that Griswold, you're lying, you're a scoundrel. These included Poe's boss, George Rex Graham, and also one of Poe's fiancés, Sarah Helen Whitman, wrote Edgar Poe and his critics, and really trash-talked Rufus Griswold for embellishing stories about Poe's life, trying to make Poe seem like a really horrible person. But then Whitman here made up stories about Poe's life to make him seem like more of a mystical figure with supernatural powers. So before you know it, there were Poe biographies and memoirs all over the place, and they only bore the slightest resemblance to Edgar Allan Poe's actual life. It took decades later, well into the 20th century, before people started to uncover some of Griswold's fabrications, some of Poe's fabrications, some of Whitman's fabrications, 
and put the story back together. And that's why this document is so interesting. This is Poe really trying to make his name as a poet. Sure, he's had his short stories published, he's been a magazine editor, a literary critic, but he wants to really make his mark. And he once wrote that to be appreciated, you must be read. So how is he going to be read? He's going to get people's attention. He's going to create a persona, a legend surrounding himself, so that people won't be able to help but read his works. So this is Poe crafting his public image. So that leaves us without a Poe autobiography. Well, he left us something almost as good. When he was about 20 years old, he wrote a poem and a ladies' album, something he never intended to be published, and it wasn't even discovered and published until 26 years after Poe's death. But I think it was pretty revealing of where he was that time in his life. It begins, From childhood's hour I've not been as others were, I've not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken my sorrow. I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone. And all I loved, I loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still. Well, if you'd like to check out one of these Poe biographies, why not do so while supporting the museum? Just buy your copy at shop.poemuseum.org. If you already have a biography and just want access to exclusive content like this and gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum cats, why not support the museum by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash poemuseum. And as always, we know you came here to see videos of the cats. This is your Poe Museum Cat Fix of the Week.